Hey, how's it going guys, and welcome back to the fourth iteration of my Ultimate Pixelmon Tournament series. If you haven't seen the previous three videos, I highly recommend checking out the playlist that includes all of them. Now, there will be spoilers for the previous three videos ahead, so if you want to go ahead and watch those first before watching this video, I highly recommend you do so. They're some of my best videos, and it's my favorite series to make on YouTube. Okay, with all that said, it is our fourth season of our Pixelmon Tournament. And for the fourth season, a new format was developed to play for just this season. Um, we wanted to do a unique season every couple of seasons, and for this one, the theme was Monogen. For all the rules of the format, please check the description where I link the document with all the rules, but to basically summarize, you only get to use Pokemon in whichever generation you are randomly given. There are also no legendary slots in this format, so no legendary Pokemon will be used. Now, to do a quick recap of the previous videos, in Season 1, I had won in a flawless fashion, 2-0-ing all of my battles. And then in Season 2, I had gotten second place after some very, very tough matches. But in Season 3, I was able to win yet again, and it was definitely some of my hardest battles I've ever had thus far. Since I won the previous season, I got to pick which generation I got. And in the end, I ended up just calling my mom and asking her to pick a number between 1 and 8. Also, side note, Generation 9 isn't included in this monogen because of, um, well, it's incomplete in Pixelmon, so it just didn't make sense to include it. So Generations 1 through 8, and my mom picked 2. So, Generation 2 was my choice. And I wanted to do something funny. I wanted to build a team around Octillery, the Pokemon in the thumbnail, as well as the title. It's a goofy yet fun strategy because Octillery gets the ability Moody, and if you don't know what that ability does, basically at the end of every turn, one stat gets lowered by one stage, but one stat gets boosted by two stages. So if you get really lucky, you can get a very, very overpowered Octillery. And um, you'll see more of that with the team. But before we get into the team, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's introduce you to my Season 4 team. Chapter 1, The Team. After winning the previous season, I still wanted to win this season, but more than anything, with the new monogen format and the power level decreasing thanks to the removal of legendaries, I wanted to use some more underrated and fun Pokemon. I wanted to use Pokemon I never truly use in our regular format, and wanted to have a wacky type of team. You'll see what I mean as we go through, but all of our Pokemon this season are rated UU and under, most of them being rated RU, with the exception of Octillery with Moody, because that's usually like a Ubers type Pokemon. So, starting off our team is our shiny starter we get for winning last season, Gosudo the Hisuian Typhlosion. Gosudo uses his great fire ghost typing to do big damage and to help clean up late game or potentially wall break. For the moves we have, we have Eruption for huge opening damage, then we have Flamethrower for when Gosudo takes damage and we can simply start spamming that, as well as Shadow Ball for more stab, and then Extra Sensory for coverage. Gosudo's EVs and natures are seen on screen, they'll be, they'll be like that for all the team members. And I went with Modest instead of Timid Nature, because we really need that extra bit of power to get more reliable KOs and damage off. Plus, with Gosudo's item being the Choice Scarf, I was already confident in his speed. Next up is Zilla the Shiny Tyranitar. Zilla is our weather reset to counter some weather teams thanks to the Sandstream ability, as well as our special wall. I went with the EVs in nature on the chart you guys see, so Zilla can take essentially any special move, including Focus Blast, and the moves I chose are Pursuit to counter Ghost and Psychic times, specifically Gengar, Dragapult, and Galarian and regular Slowking. Um, I just, I wanted to make sure that we punished those switching in and out. And then we have Crunch for more consistent stab damage, as well as Stone Edge. Our final move is Thunder Wave to cause the disruption and cripple our foes. The item Zilla has is Leftovers for Longevity. Our next team member is Scar the Skarmory, who is our main physical wall this season, as well as our hazard removal and toxic user. I went all out on our physical defense and HP, and then for our moves, I settled with Toxic for chip damage and crippling threats, Defog for hazard removal, Body Press since our defense is so high we might as well take advantage with it, and for the final move, it's Roost for longevity and recovery. 
For the item, I chose Heavy Duty Boots because I didn't want Skarmory to get chipped by Stealth Rocks and then Sturdy not activate because I was worried that I might have to sacrifice Scar to get a Defog off since he's also not the fastest Pokemon ever. Scar plays an important role of removing hazards and walling off physical sweepers. Our next team member is Hibby the Meganium. Yes, Meganium is known as the worst starter competitively, but I felt this was the best season to try and run one with the lower power level thanks to no legendaries, and it's also my sister's favorite Pokemon. The EV spread chosen is to ensure Meganium at max health can survive a Brave Bird or Acrobatics from any base 100 attack flying type without any boost, thanks to Balak, shout out to him for the EV spread. The rest of the EVs are in HP and Special Defense, and the moveset I chose was Leech Seed and Substitute to potentially stall, be annoying, as well as Giga Drain for stab, more recovery. I also ran Leftovers because I'm trying to make Meganium live as much as possible. And then the final move is Aromatherapy. This is a move that basically gets rid of all status conditions on your team, and this makes Meganium a phenomenal support Pokemon. Our next team member, I wanted to go full offensive, so I'm introducing you to Manny the Mamoswine. I chose to go max speed and max attack life orb with the jolly nature because I really just wanted him to outspeed a lot of threats and be able to pick up a lot of KOs, and I didn't want to waste any time trying to set up, so that's why we chose that. The moves that I went for is Earthquake, Icicle Crash for powerful stab damage, Ice Shard for priority as well as getting any Garchomp and Pokemon that are four times weak to it out of the way. And of course, finally, Knock Off to get rid of any items and to be a nuisance to switch into. I also needed Manny to counter arguably the most scary Pokemon in the entire format, which you probably guessed it, Garchomp. Manny ties together the physical offensives extremely well. Finally, as you've seen in the thumbnail and the title, we have Hakari the Octillery. The real ones understand this nickname reference. Hakari has the ability Moody, which we've talked about earlier, and um, he's basically just gambling his stats and trying to do good. So the moveset I chose is Substitute and Protect to pretty much stall for any Moody stat boost, as well as prevent him from getting um, status. So. I wanted Substitute, especially because if you can get his defenses up and then get a Substitute off, it's almost unbreakable. I also gave Hikari the item Leftovers since I'm planning on using Substitute quite a lot. And then the two damaging moves I chose were Scald and Ice Beam. Scald is like the best water type move ever, um, having a burn chance is insane, and then Ice Beam is phenomenal coverage. This is the main Pokemon I really wanted to get good moments with and to get to shine. And I knew if I could just get a bit lucky, Hikari could be a monster. I even kept this Pokemon a secret from my own Twitch chat and everyone on the server except Wayne and Ivy. Octillery, I wanted to get major highlights with and um, I, I really wanted this to be our main Pokemon since it is technically the highest rated Pokemon on our team. So with all that said, our team is made, and as you can see, it is definitely a lower tier team. Everything is pretty much UU and RU, except Hibby. We don't talk about Meganium's usual stance in competitive Pokemon. As the bracket was made, I was excited. It was a different format with some new players and some returning faces. My first match ended up being against someone who had also received Generation 2, Firestorm. Chapter 2, Jackpot. Firestorm's team consisted of Typhlosion, Crobat, Ariados, Cleavor, Espeon, and Feraligator. I felt good with my team into his. I knew the playstyle all too well with Dragon Dance Feraligator paired with a Sticky Web user, and I also had a play come into mind as we walked onto the battlefield. This was my Season 4 debut battle. I'm the Season 3 champion, so I need to make a statement. It was a risky play and it could go wrong, but I came in with confidence. The battle starts with his Ariados lead, just as I predicted, and I started with Hikari. I knew Sticky Webs was going to be set up, so I used Substitute. I then used Protect to stall out some more stat boosts. At first, the stat boosts weren't great, but as time went on, they gradually got better. Finally, I used two Scalds and take out the Ariados. While I'm left with around 50%, I have an absurd amount of stat boosts. Next up comes Espeon, and as I used Protect for not only getting more boosts, but also scouting the next used move, I saw Hyper Voice. This move is terrifying because it hits past Substitute. I had a plan, however. I did some chip damage and saw Firestorm use Wish. I then get taken down to 42 health. 
This is where the risky play comes in. I use Protect to get more health from Leftovers, and then the following turn I Dynamax. This allows me to double my HP and set the rain. Espeon can't do enough damage to Hikari, and I get a lucky Moody Boost that raises my special attack, and the following turn I take out Espeon. For Alligator comes out next. I use Max Guard to scout and then I get an unlucky defense drop from Moody, but it doesn't matter. For Alligator's Crunch isn't enough to break the substitute, and Scald does huge damage. After a quick Protect and Leftovers Recovery, I then use Substitute again, knowing that For Alligator takes two hits to break the sub. For Alligator breaks the sub, but I simply had another put up. The following turn, For Alligator falls to another Scald. Crobat comes in and Firestorm goes for his own Dynamax, but Crobat not only can't break the Substitute even with Max Ooze, but it gets taken out by a single Ice Beam. Cleavor is in next, it misses the Stone Axe and then falls to Scald. Typhlosion is next, but one Scald and the battle is finished. I debuted my Season 4 with an Octillery Sweep. After 6 0ing Firestorm with Octillery, I knew I wouldn't be able to do it again, and I had a full advantage because Firestorm had hardly anything to go off my team. I knew this next battle, I could utilize the element of surprise. Firestorm leads Ariados and I lead Zilla. I use Stone Edge to bring Ariados to its Sash after it set up Sticky Web, but thanks to the Sandstorm chip, it takes it out. Just like Lucy had done to me in Season 1 with her Tyranitar against my Galvantula. Firestorm sends in Cleavor next, so I send in Scar. Scar easily eats the close combat and I use Defog. Firestorm switches into Espeon, but now the Sticky Web has been removed. I switch into Zilla while Firestorm swaps into Typhlosion. I decide to simply go for Stone Edge, but Firestorm goes for Max Knuckle. Zilla is able to tank it and deal big damage back with Stone Edge, however. I then pivot into Gosudo, which is immune to the oncoming Max Knuckle. I use Shadow Ball and I take Typhlosion down to 3.7% and then tank a Max Flare. I then tank a Sun Boosted Flamethrower and get the KO with Shadow Ball. For Alligator comes out next and I use Shadow Ball. Firestorm had predicted me to switch here and gone for Dragon Dance, but even a For Alligator at plus one speed is still slower than a Scarf Typhlosion, and with one more Shadow Ball, For Alligator falls. Crobat comes out next and I go for another Shadow Ball, taking Crobat down to 49%, but Gosudo falls to Acrobatics. I send in Manny and go for Ice Shard to pick up the KO. Cleavor is out next and it barely tanks the Earthquake and then KOs Manny. I send in Scar, who, after tanking a very powerful Stone Edge, gets the Revenge KO with Body Press. Espeon finally comes out and takes down Scar with Shadow Ball, but I simply send in Zilla, who finishes the match with a Crunch. I have won Round 1 in a 2-0 fashion. Firestorm had a good team, but my team stacked up well against it, and it had many Pokemon I'm super familiar with, such as Feraligator, Ariados, and Cleavor. GG is the Firestorm, and I proceed to round two. A great debut for me. Chapter three, the new age. The next matchup was actually one of two teams I didn't want to face, Mendingi. The teams I didn't want to face this tournament were Wayne's and Mendingi's. The reasoning behind this was because their teams just naturally did super well into mine, which is the nature of Pokemon. Unfortunately, my spot in the bracket was not in my favor this season, as my round two opponent was Mandingi. His team consisted of Incineroar, Toxapex, Decidueye, Alolan Raichu, Alolan Ninetales, and Kamo. Mamoswine does really good into his team, but doesn't have enough power to do it all by himself, and the rest of my team really struggles. With this in mind, I went into this battle with, uh, well, to be honest, I was actually super reckless this battle. You'll see. I lead Manny, expecting him to lead Toxapex, but instead he leads Kamo. I then decide to go for Icicle Crash, hoping for him to switch or go for D-Dance, but he actually Dynamaxes. I do a little over half HP, but he KOs Manny with Max Knuckle. My strongest Pokemon against him is out. I then send in Zilla, trying to bait a Max Knuckle, and then pivot into Gosudo, who would be immune, but I accidentally clicked Pursuit. Yeah, I know, I'm disappointed too. Zilla gets taken out, so I send in Hibby. I go for a Leech Seed, but Max Wormwing gets the KO. I then send in Gosudo and get the Revenge KO with Eruption. His Incineroar comes out, so I pivot into Scar. I then swap into Hikari, hoping he'd go for Flare Blitz, but he used Knockoff. I then decide to Dynamax and take out Incineroar with Max Geyser, setting up Rain. His Alolan Raichu is out next, and I stalled a turn with Max Guard, even getting a lucky Special Defense boost. But even with that, Hikari falls to an Electro Ball. 
I send in Gosudo, who gets the KO Shadow Ball after tanking his own Electro Ball, but his Toxapex comes out, and I send in Scar. After I get a Roost and a couple turns pass of this stalemate, he finally switches into Alolan Ninetales. I swap into Gosudo and go for Flamethrower, but he pivots back into Toxapex. I should have just used Extra Sensory here. With all this going on, I just don't have the firepower to break his team. Eventually, Scar falls to Blizzard from the Ninetales, and then Gosudo takes out Ninetales with a Shadow Ball, but when Toxapex comes in, it simply finishes the battle with Liquidation, and I lost the first battle. The second battle begins, and he goes for Incineroar as I lead Hikari. I get my leftovers knocked off, but I set up a substitute. This is when a realization hits me, but it's too late. Darkest Lariat ignores my defense boost from Moody. He can easily break my substitute. I go for Scald, but it doesn't do enough as he breaks my sub. With a fantastic bring by Mandingi and very well prepared by him, I just switch into Zilla and go for Thunder Wave as he goes for Drain Punch. It's huge damage for him. I then use Stone Edge, but he swaps into Toxapex. I go for another Thunder Wave on the Toxapex and then swap into Hikari. I need some luck. I set up one last substitute. Unfortunately, the stat boosts I get aren't helping me in the slightest, and after a couple poison jabs, he breaks the sub. I just get a little damage off, and then Hikari falls. I send in Manny and go for the knockoff, which KOs his oncoming Decidueye that he had swapped in. His combo then comes in, and I switch to Gosudo, who is immune to the max knuckle. I get decent damage off with extra sensory, but I fall to the oncoming max quake. I easily should have just swapped into Scar here. I was playing way too reckless and way too fast. I switch into Hibby and set up Elite Seed after tanking a Max Wormwind, but Hibby falls the next turn. I send in Manny, who takes out Kamo with Ice Shard, and Incineroar comes out. So I switch into Zilla, who falls to the Flare Blitz just and the Poison Damage. I send in Scar, who takes out Incineroar with two Body Presses, but sustains big damage in the process. Alolan Raichu is out and I'm able to live the Psychic, but I miss the Toxic. I then send in Manny and Dynamax. I use Max Quake, but the Alolan Ninetales somehow lives and it does chip damage. I take it out the next turn, but the poison damage is wearing off Manny and the life orb damage. Eventually, I fall to both of those stacking up and I lose the entire set 2-0. Looking back at this battle, it's a rough matchup for me already just looking at our teams, but Mandingi played extremely well and just better than I did. I was being way too fast, reckless, and careless, which is the exact opposite of what I needed to win. This loss was necessary because it really made me sit back and get my head back in the game. I am now in the loser's bracket. One more loss and that'll be the end of my season 4 run, but I'm not ready yet. Chapter 4 Refocus. As I wait for my next opponent and losers, I see that it is none other than my oldest rival, Ivy. We have been best friends since childhood, and we've also been battling each other competitively in Pokemon since Generation 6. She battled me in the finals of Season 1, where I was able to get a win and get first place. She battled me in the loser bracket finals in Season 2, where I was able to win yet again and get second place. And in Season 3, we had never gotten to reach each other, and I was able to win first place, but it still felt strange not battling Ivy for an entire season. Now, we have reunited on the battlefield in the early rounds of the loser bracket. Ivy is always a tough opponent because I have to play so differently against her than anyone else because she knows how I play better than anyone else does. With all this in mind, I look at the team. Torkoal, Blaziken, Metagross, Shiftry, Walreen, and Flygon. She's running a Generation 3 Sun Team, and she's ran a Blaziken before and had done extremely well with it. I needed to tread lightly, but my focus was back and I had to show everyone that. Battle 1 begins with her leading Torkoal and I lead Gosudo. Sun may benefit her, but it also benefits my Gosudo's powerful eruptions. I use Eruption and take Torkoal all the way down to 14%, but she used Yawn. I then switch into Hakari, expecting the Stealth Rocks. I use Scald and take out the Torkoal, but Shiftry comes in next. I make a risky play, but not too risky. Hikari doesn't do hardly anything in this matchup, so I go for Ice Beam. If she overthinks it and goes for knockoff, I just get huge damage. But if she just simply clicks Solar Blade and takes out Hikari, I get a free switch in. She chooses Solar Blade, which KOs Hikari. I then send in Manny to face the Shiftry. I go for the Dynamax, but she also does the same. Her Max Flare doesn't do much, and my Max Hailstorm takes her all the way to Focus Sash, but the Hail does the rest of the chip damage. 
After Shiftry falls along with her Dynamax, she sends in Metagross, but Max Quake takes it down in one shot. Blaziken comes in and I realize something that Ivy doesn't. She runs her Blaziken Adamant Nature since it has speed boost so you don't have to worry much about the speed nature. However, I'm Jolly Natured, so I outspeed and take out the Blaziken with a swift Max Quake. Flygon comes out and I simply use Ice Shard to take it out. Walring comes in. After two earthquakes, it falls, and I win the first battle of the set. The next battle starts with me leading Hibby. I go for Leech Seed, but Blaziken takes her out with a Flare Blitz, but it took insane recoil damage. I then send in Gosudo. Blaziken needs three speed boosts to outspeed this scarfed monster. It uses Protect to pick up the second speed boost, but the following turn it falls to a single Shadow Ball. Shiftry comes out next, but there is no sun, so I switch into Zilla. Ivy had Dynamax and used Max Flare to set the sun herself. I pivot into Scar, predicting the Max Overgrowth. I then predict another Max Flare, so I swap into Zilla. I have successfully pivoted past all of her Dynamax turns. She goes for Knock Off, but I use Thunder Wave to paralyze the Shift Tree. Zilla then falls to the oncoming Solar Blade, but I swap into Ghost Sudo and I use Eruption, but the Shift Tree survives off the Focus Sash and takes out Ghost Sudo with Knock Off. I then send in Akari, and with one Protect, I stall out the last Sun Turn, and Solar Blade isn't a one turn move anymore. I go for Ice Beam, but she swaps into Torkoal to eat it. I then simply set up a Substitute while she had gone for Yawn, which fails thanks to the Substitute. I go for Scald as she swaps into Metagross. She goes for Meteor Mash, but it doesn't break the Substitute, and I'm getting great stat boost. My special attack is now through the roof. I then spam Substitute, waiting for Metagross eventually to break it so I can just make a new one. It doesn't work, however, and Ivy swaps into Flygon. The Outrage is able to break the Substitute, but one Ice Beam takes out Flygon. Shiftry comes in, but I simply Ice Beam it. Walrein comes in, and I just use Scald. I then see that Walrein can't do anything to Scar, so I switch. I then use Toxic, but Ivy sent in Torkoal. I then swap back to Akari, who takes down the Metagross that gets switched in. Walrein comes in next, and eventually Hakari faints from the poison damage. I then send in Scar and finish Walrein off with a Body Press. Torkoal comes in, and I do some chip damage with Body Press before Scar falls to Lava Plume. Finally, Manny comes in, and I end the battle with a Dynamaxed Max Quake. I have won the entire set of my first loser bracket match. A great battle from Ivy, and it's always a pleasure and honor battling her. The win wasn't easy, but thanks to the combined forces of the team as well as me being refocused, the main damage dealers Manny and Akari were able to absolutely carry this team. And we were able to get a great win. Chapter 5, Ghosts of the Past My next battle was against Fragged, and a fun fact about him is we actually had the first battle ever in our Pixelmon tournament series. If you recall in Season 1's video, he was the first battle I ever had. We finally meet again in the Season 4 Loser Bracket. And, well, I lost the footage. My stream was messing up that day due to storms, so I actually recorded it, but recently I had a lot of files get deleted and I have tried to get them back. Thumbnails, a recorded charity tournament that I had won with Gouging Fire and swept in the finals, and more stuff sadly gone. So I'll just give a brief summary of how everything went, and I do want to apologize for Frag for not having the footage of our battle. Um, it was a great battle, you were a great opponent, and I'll say some more thoughts at the end. Fragged has an amazing team of Generation 1 Pokemon. Gengar, which was G-Max, Blastoise, which was also G-Max, Dragonite, Arcanine, Umbreon, and Scizor. It's a good team with great balance, and he even used my Blastoise set for my first place Season 3 team. I knew the battle was rough, but I also knew Hikari could go big here as long as the Gengar was gone and I had a perfect counter to Gengar, Zilla. In Battle 1, I ended up in a position where Zilla simply pursuit trapped and KO'd the Gengar, and after that I was able to use Scizor as setup fodder for Hakari. Hakari got many boosts and even froze the Blastoise. In the end, Fragged actually forfeited the match because Hakari was just going crazy and he had two Pokemon left, and at that point he had nothing for Hakari. In Battle 2, I didn't lean on Hakari as much because I had a new play. The battle looked close and Fragged was playing extremely well, but there was one thing that he was missing. Gosudo and Manny were constantly the last two Pokemon alive and Pokemon I was saving in the battle. Mamoswine did big damage and fell, but I had Gosudo left. 
With Gosudo's Choice Scarf, he was the fastest Pokemon on the field. And while Frag did have priority and extreme speed, thanks to Gosudo's Ghost Typing, it didn't matter. I finished the battle with a Shadow Ball, and it was a close match, but I knew since like turn, I want to say like 15, that I was going to win because I had taken out Umbreon and Blastoise, so Gosudo could easily just get revenge kills. I just had to get damage off, which I was able to do thanks to Manny and the other members of the team. So I won my second loser's bracket match in a 2-0 fashion. And I want to say again, big GG's to Fragged, and I'm super sorry that the footage is gone. I'm looking forward to our third battle, and just seeing how you played this battle versus our first one shows how far you've come and how much you have improved. Great game, Fragged, and I'm looking forward to our next battle, and I will definitely have the footage for it. Chapter 6, Flying Too Close to the Sun. My next match was against Wayne, and if you recall earlier, I said that the two teams I didn't want to face this tournament were Mandingi and Wayne. Wayne was actually also a rematch because last season I had battled him and I had won, but it was very close thanks to his insane Darkrai. And in this season, he had such a great team. We actually did four practice matches before the entire tournament, and I never won a single time against him. Not to mention, I didn't change anything from my team to help the matchup. I just knew that I had to play my best, and no matter what, it would be an uphill battle. With this knowledge and all the losses and how I lost in my head, I really was ready. Wayne's team consisted of a Battle Bond Greninja, a Charizard, Trevenant, Heliowisk, Klefki, and a Garchomp. His Garchomp even had the most KOs in the entire tournament. It was an absurd beast paired with a very strong Sun team. I looked up the hill, and it was a rough match but I really was ready, and I had a plan. I had to deny the sunlight as much as I possibly could. The first battle starts with Greninja versus Scar. I decide to go for Toxic, but Wayne just swaps into Klefki. I predict the Thunder Wave and go for Manny, who's immune. I predict Wayne switching and use Icicle Crash, but Wayne just sets Spikes. I then just go for Earthquake, KOing the Klefki. Greninja comes out, and I swap to Hibby. Hibby tanks a Scald and then lands Elite Seed after surviving an Ice Beam. With Greninja seated, I swap into Scar, knowing Wayne's going to swap into Trevenant. I use Toxic and poison the Ghost Tree as it uses Substitute. I use Defog and eat the Shadow Claw. I then roost back all my health and then Wayne swaps into Heliolisk. I swap back into Hibby and I go for a Leaf Seed after tanking a Weather Ball. I then use Giga Drain, but Wayne switches into Charizard. I predict him using Sunny Day, so I use Leaf Seed. I then send in Zilla who resets the weather. I then know that Wayne wants to use Focus Blast here, so I swap back into Hibby, but Wayne actually just switches into Trevenant. I switch back into Scar, who can easily wall this Trevenant. Eventually, after Roost Spam, Trevenant falls to the poison damage, and Charizard comes out. So, I swap into Gosudo. I go for Flamethrower, and Wayne switches into Heliolisk. So, I do huge damage. I then use another Flamethrower, and Heliolisk falls. Greninja comes back out, so I swap into Hikari. Hikari eats the Scald, the Dark Pulse then does big damage, and it even gets the flinch, and I'm in a bad spot. I switch into Scar, but the Dark Pulse is simply hitting way too hard. I then just decide to sacrifice Hikari, which is a very risky thing to do, because immediately after, Wayne's Greninja turns into Ash Greninja. I then send in Zilla, and I go for Crunch. Wayne then Dynamaxes the Ash Greninja, and Zilly barely survives the Max Geyser. The Crunch lands, but Greninja is able to tank it. I swap into Gosudo, and one Max Geyser takes him out. I then send in Zilla, and then pivot into Scar. Scar falls to the Max Hailstorm, but so does Greninja thanks to the Hail damage. I then send in Zilla as Wayne goes into Charizard. I somehow tank a Flamethrower, and then land the Thunder Wave. The next Focus Blast then misses, and I KO Charizard with Stone Edge. The Garchomp is out. Garchomp takes Zilla out with Earthquake. I then send in Hibby and land Elite Seed after tanking a Dragon Claw. One more Dragon Claw KOs Hibby. I then send in Manny and one Ice Shard later, the battle is finished and I won the first battle of the set. Before we begin the next battle, I just think it's kind of a fun fact that Wayne hates playing against my Mamoswine and he was actually the one that convinced me to use Mamoswine, so thanks for that Wayne. The next battle begins with Garchomp versus Manny. I use Icicle Crash knowing Wayne's going to switch, and Wayne switches into Greninja. Manny does big damage, doing almost half of the Greninja's HP. I then swapped into Hikari, tanking the Scald, and I used Protect trying to get some boost, but Wayne just switches into Garchomp. 
However, Moody had given me an especial attack boost, so I used Ice Beam. Hikari lives the Earthquake and then KOs Garchomp with Ice Beam. This is huge. Wayne then sends in Heliolisk, so I swap into Hibby. Wayne had double swapped and now has Trevenant into Hibby. I then swap into Hikari, who eats the Shadow Claw. Hikari then lands a huge Ice Beam, taking Trevenant down to 55% before getting taken out by another Shadow Claw. I send in Gosudo, and I simply use Eruption. Wayne swapped into Klefki, who got decimated by the Eruption. Greninja comes out and falls to yet another Eruption. Charizard comes out, and I use Eruption yet again, taking it down to 43%. The Charizard does good damage with Air Slash, and I then swap into Zilla as Wayne Gigantamaxes the Charizard. Zilla is able to eat the Wildfire. I then know Wayne is going to go for Max Knuckle, so I swap into Gosudo, who's immune. I use Shadow Ball, but Charizard lives on 1%. However, Gosudo lives the next Wildfire hit, and the Sandstorm does chip damage, taking out the Charizard. Gosudo is left standing with 4 HP. Heliolisk comes in, and I decide to just sacrifice Gosudo. He's done his job. I then send in Hibby and land Elite Seed while Wayne paralyzes Hibby. I then swap into Zilla as Wayne switches into Trevenant. I decide to go for the Dynamax Max Darkness, which KOs Trevenant. Heliolisk comes out, but one last Max Darkness KOs the Heliolisk, and I win the entire set. Wayne was a fantastic match and a great opponent. I had to play at some of my best in order to beat him. With Wayne defeated, I get to continue my climb towards the top. Chapter 7, The Heartbeat of the Drum My next opponent was yet another rematch, someone I haven't faced since Season 2, a longtime friend, Benny. I battled Benny in Season 2 in the loser bracket where I was able to defeat him and his terrifying Fairy Arceus team. His team this season was also crazy and easily one of the best all-around teams in the season. He got Generation 8 and he has a Rillaboom, Barrascuta, Galarian Slowking, Cinderace, Corviknight, and Sandaconda. His team was also entirely shiny, so he was flexing, and he also was the person I lived with this season. Benny was terrifying because not only did he have a great team, but he had just played the best Pixelmon battle I have ever seen. I even made an entire video on it. He was just as determined as me, and he was looking to defeat me, but I wanted to keep going. I wasn't done yet. I still had a lot of fight left in me, and the battle began. Benny leads Galarian Slowking, and I lead Zilla. We both know I can Pursuit Trap this Pokemon, and I know Benny won't switch because he knows he can just kind of tank uh, regular Pursuits, so I just go for Crunch for the extra power. It takes Slowking down to 20%. Benny then used Scald, but it doesn't get the burn. Zilla then takes out Galarian Slowking with a Pursuit. In case he did try to switch this time, I get a guarantee KO. His Cinderace is out next, so I swap into Gosudo, but a crazy lame glitch happens that actually makes Zilla pursue as it switches out. Such a lame thing to happen, and I truly am sorry to Benny. It happened because Benny double swapped and went into Barrascuta as I swapped into Gosuda. It, it was just, it was a weird glitch. I then swap into Hikari and tank a Liquidation. I then go for the Substitute expecting a switch, but he did great damage with Close Combat instead. I then go for Scald and get a crit, bringing Barrascuta down to 9%, but it breaks the sub with close combat. However, thanks to the Moody speed boost, Hikari takes down Barrascuta with Scald. Rillaboom comes out next, so I switch into Scar who easily eats the Grassy Glide. I then use Body Press as Benny sends in Sandaconda, and I get a crit, doing about 32%. I swap into Hibby, but Benny had swapped back into Rillaboom. I decide to switch back into Scar as Benny uses Knock Off. I go for Toxic, but he switches into Corviknight, who's immune. It's just pivot battles at this point. I go for a simple Roost as Benny uses Body Press and does good damage. I go for a Body Press of my own to do damage. I then Roost up my health, and then I switch into Gosudo, who's immune to the oncoming Body Press. I use Eruption as Benny switches into Sandaconda, but it falls. Benny then sends in Cinderace, but it falls to the next Eruption. Rillaboom comes out, and I swap into Scar as Benny uses his Gigantamax. Skarmory is able to tank the barrage of Dynamax attacks, and I roost up the health. I then use Toxic as Benny uses Drain Punch, which gets close to KOing Scar, but I just roost spam to stall. I send in Gosudo as Benny uses Drain Punch. The grassy terrain has now ended, so Grassy Glide no longer has priority. I click Eruption and take out Rillaboom. Corviknight comes in next, but one last Eruption wins me the battle. I wasn't truly happy with this win thanks to the glitch, but we talked about it, and ultimately, even without that glitch, I had just been in such a good position that I was going to win either way, but we head into battle 2. 
Battle 2 begins. I lead Scar as Benny leads Cinderace. I go for Toxic, but Benny had used Iron Head, which not only made Scar flinch, but it also made Cinderace a Steel type, so the Toxic wouldn't have worked. This was an insanely nice play. After Benny's insanely good play, I switch into Gosudo, who gets hit by a powerful Pyro Ball. I go for Shadow Ball as Benny switches into Galarian Slow King, and it does about 36%. I then switch into Hikari, who eats the Scald. I then decide to use Protect and Substitute to farm some Moody Boost, but I really don't get lucky, and eventually a huge Sludge Bomb hits and even poisons Hikari. I let Hikari fall, but he had taken the Galarian Slow King down to 25%. I then send in Zilla to get the easy revenge KO. Benny sends in Barraskuta, so I swap into Scar, who eats the close combat. I go for Roost as Benny switches into Sandaconda, and then I pivot into Hibby as Benny uses Coil. I then go for Leech Seed, but Benny swaps into Rillaboom, who's immune. I pivot into Scar, but Benny had double swapped into Sandaconda. A pivot battle happens until we finally end up with Hibby against a poisoned Sandaconda. I go for Giga Drain, but Benny switches into Cinderace, who easily tanks it. I switch into Gosudo, who hits a fantastic Shadow Ball the next turn into a swapping Barraskuta, who gets the KO. Rillaboom is out next, and I actually even went into Pokemon Showdown, and I got on the calculator to see if this next play worked. I was going to Dynamax Gosudo and live the Grassy Glide thanks to the double HP, and then KO with Max Flare. However, I forgot to change one crucial part of the calculation. This play would have worked if Rillaboom had the ability Overgrow. I didn't change his ability to Grassy Surge and calc the Grassy Terrain boost. So that messed up the entire calculation and um, Rillaboom KO'd here no matter what. So yeah, that was uh, that one's on me. I'm in a terrible position now because my Dynamax is completely wasted. I had gone for the Dynamax and Rillaboom just takes out Gosudo with Grassy Glide. So I need to get out of this. I go into Scar and use Roost as Benny switches into Sandaconda. I then go into Hibby as Benny coils. I go for Leech Seed, but he swaps into Rillaboom. I then proceed to do some nice damage with Giga Drain as he's using Wood Hammer, and I take Rillaboom down to 71% and I switch into Scar, who shakes the Wood Hammer off. I go for Body Press and I do good damage to the oncoming Sandaconda. I swap into Hibby and tank a Stone Edge. I go for Giga Drain, but Benny had swapped into Rillaboom. I swap into Scar as Benny uses Drain Punch trying to get health back. I use Body Press, but he swapped into Cinderace and it does good damage. I then go for Roost, but Benny Dynamaxes the Cinderace and takes out Scar. It's looking hopeless. I switch into Hibby, but the Cinderace takes her out next. I send in Zilla, but Cinderace also takes him down. I'm only left with Manny, and I was really sure of defeat but Manny wasn't. I used Ice Shard hoping for the KO, but Cinderace barely survives. However, it had missed Pyro Ball. One more Ice Shard takes it down. Rillaboom comes in and one Ice Shard takes it down. The Corviknight enters the battlefield and I use Icicle Crash and I do about 31% while Corviknight hits a hard hitting body press. I need to get a flinch here. I hit another Icicle Crash hoping for the luck to be on my side and Corviknight flinches. One more Icicle Crash takes down the Corviknight. The Sandaconda comes in, and I need to land one last Icicle Crash, which I do successfully, and I take out the Sandaconda. But the Life Orb damage had then taken out Manny. But since I had done the finishing blow, I had gotten the win. The closest match I have ever had or even seen in Pixelmon. I had barely won and I had really good luck that second battle. And of course, determination by Manny the Mamoswine. GG's to Benny, another player who has improved so much and has played fantastic all tournament. Without the luck I had, this easily could have gone an entirely different way. Hats off to Benny, great game and the closest battle I may ever have. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next season. Chapter 8, The Loser Bracket Finals. As I made it into the finals of the loser bracket, I see my next opponent as Mandingi, the same team that had sent me down to losers in the first place. I knew it was an uphill battle, but I was determined to climb the mountain before me. The battle starts with Mandingi leading Incineroar and I leading Scar. I know he's expecting me to switch because he has Flare Blitz and I know he's going to use Knock Off. So I use Toxic. I get the read correct. 
I then go for Roost as he uses Flare Blitz, and I am able to stall it out and let the poison just do its job. I do this until both Scar and Incineroar faint. Mendingi then sends in Toxapex, and I send in Hakari. I go for the Substitute as Mendingi uses Toxic Spikes. I then go for Scald as he uses Toxic Spikes again. I'd really like a burn here. The next turn he uses Poison Jab, but it fails to break the Substitute, and I had used Scald and got the burn. I continue to use Scald, but my luck with Moody Boost has been awful. Mendingi then switches into a Lolan Raichu, and I get a good Scald off with great damage. I then decide next turn to Dynamax and use two Max Geysers while tanking an Electro Ball to take down the Alolan Raichu. Mendingi then swaps into Decidueye, and he uses his own Dynamax and uses Max Overgrow after tanking a Max Hailstorm. I am able to survive the max overgrowth, but my Dynamax is now ended, and I for sure won't survive the following attack. I decide to swap into Hibby and tank the next max overgrowth. I then use Giga Drain for small chip as Max Phantasm takes out Hibby. Manny comes in next, and I use Icicle Crash. Mandingi gets a nice sucker punch hit in, but the Icicle Crash KOs Decidueye after. Kamo comes out next, and I swap into Gosudo, who is immune to the oncoming Drain Punch. I then start spamming Extra Sensory. Mandingi swaps into Toxapex, but two Extra Sensories take it out. Kamo comes in, and I want as much damage as I can, so I use Extra Sensory for damage because I know that Manny can just come in, use Ice Shard, and take it out, but I actually get a really lucky flinch, so the next Extra Sensory KOs. The Ninetales comes out, and I use another Extra Sensory to do about 34% before falling to the Dazzling Gleam. I send in Zilla and use Stone Edge to take down the Ninetales, winning me the first battle. I played extremely well here, a master class win, and I needed to keep this momentum. The second battle starts and it's a scary lead. He leads Kamuo as I had led Manny. I've been here before and I lost. He knows that, but so do I. So I do a risky play. I go for Icicle Crash and he doesn't Dynamax this turn and I land it. Manny KOs the Kamuo turn 1. Mendingi then sends in Incineroar, so I swap into Zilla. He uses Flare Blitz and gets a crazy burn on Zilla. I then pivot back into Scar, knowing he's just going to want a Drain Punch here, and I use Toxic, narrowly surviving the oncoming Flare Blitz. I pivot into Zilla, who eats yet another Flare Blitz. I then predict the Drain Punch, and I send in Gosudo, who's immune. I'm free to use Eruption here for big damage on anything Mendingi sends in. He chooses to sacrifice the Incineroar. The Alolan Raichu comes out next, so I send in Hibby, who easily eats the Electro Ball. I then go for Giga Drain as Mendingi sends in Alolan Ninetales. I do about 30%. I know he's going to go for Aurora Veil, so I use Leech Seed. It goes just how I thought. I then pivot into Zilla, and he changes the weather so Blizzard isn't 100% accurate anymore, and he actually misses it. I go for Crunch, and he sends in Decidueye. I do about 22%, and then I swap into Hibby. Hibby eats the Leaf Blade, and I use Giga Drain, stalling out the Aurora Veil. He then roosts. I need this Decidueye gone. It had used Spirit Shackle, so I am forced to stay in this 1v1, and Hibby eventually falls. I then send in Manny. Even if he Dynamaxes here, I can KO with Icicle Crash, and I go for it. But Mandingi Dynamaxes, and then Icicle Crash misses and Manny falls to the max overgrowth. This, this was the unluckiest moment I have had in the entire Pixelmon series. In hindsight, I really should have just Dynamaxed Manny and gotten the 100% accurate max Hailstorm, but no one really plans to miss an 85 accurate move, and I mean, that's just simply Pokemon. I send in Zilla, but Zilla falls to another max overgrowth. I send in my low HP Scar, but yet again, another one falls. I send in Hikari trying to fish a defense boost, but my luck isn't with me. I go for Scald for a lucky burn, but it doesn't burn, and then Decidueye lands a crit Leaf Blade KOing Hikari. I send in Gosudo, who barely survives the Sucker Punch, but picks up the KO. Alolan Raichu comes out next, and even though I Dynamax Gosudo, he falls to the Electro Ball, and I lose the second battle. This loss was devastating. Mandingi played extremely well, but I also know that if that Icicle Crash landed, I would have won the battle. I, I know this sounds really cocky, and but like no copium, seriously. If I would have landed that Icicle Crash, he would have wasted his Dynamax turn, and I would have KO'd Decidueye, and Manny could have gone crazy into his team. But 
that's really just Pokemon. Luck is simply part of the game. And looking back, I should have just Dynamax Manny and went for the Max Hailstorm for the 100% accuracy. I felt truly crushed after this loss. But the score is 1-1, to one, so we go to Game 3. Game 3 starts and Mendingi leads Toxapex as I lead Scar. I swap into Hikari as he uses Toxic Spikes and I use Substitute trying to stall some boosts. I then go for Scald and he switches into Decidueye as I had used Scald, but I don't get the burn. Mendingi uses Leaf Blade and breaks the Substitute, but I had landed another Scald and got the burn. I then go for Substitute, but Leaf Blade still does huge damage and does enough to where I can't use Substitute. This is terrible. I use Protect, trying to get a defense boost, which works, but Mandingi had roosted up. He then goes for Sucker Punch as I land a huge Ice Beam, taking Decidueye down to 11%. I then use Protect as Mandingi roosts, but now my defense is too high for him to KO, even with Leaf Blade. After tanking the Leaf Blade, I get the KO with Ice Beam. Alolan Raichu comes in next, so I swap into Hibby, who eats the Electro Ball. I then use Leech Seed as he sends in Incineroar. I send in Zilla, who tanks the knockoff, and I then do a risky play. I go for Stone Edge. It works, and I pick up the KO. Now, while I am in a good position, keep in mind that all of my Pokemon are getting poison, and I need to find a moment to get Scar in and use Defog. Kamo comes in, and I go for Thunder Wave, hoping for him to have used Dragon Dance, but instead he just gets the KO with Drain Punch. I go Scar here and use Toxic, but Mandingi switches into Toxapex. I use Defog, but he just sets up the Toxic Spikes yet again. He switches as I use Defog again, and Alolan Raichu is now on the field. I send in Hibby, who easily eats the attack, and then use Leech Seed, but it misses, and Mendingi has swapped into Alolan Ninetales. He sets up Aurora Veil as I send in Gosudo. I go for Eruption, but he swaps into Toxapex, who easily eats it. I send in Hikari, and he uses Toxic Spikes. I try to stall some boosts as well as Aurora Veil turns, and I get a Substitute up, but he swaps into a Lolan Raichu. I use Scald as he breaks my Substitute with Electro Ball, and I do about 28%, with getting the burn and doing passive damage now. I send in Hibby, who happily eats the Electro Ball, and I use Leech Seed as he swaps into Kamo. I then go for Aromatherapy to heal off the poison as Mendingi went for Dragon Dance. I then go for the Giga Drain as he goes for setup yet again. The Drain Punch then does huge damage next turn, and I just sacrifice Hibby so I can safely get Scar in. His Drain Punch does huge damage, but I land the Toxic. I then send in Gosudo, who is immune to Drain Punch. I go for Extra Sensory, but with his Dragon Dance boost, he now outspeeds and KOs Gosudo with Earthquake. I should have pivoted back into Scar, and I don't know why I didn't. I send in Hikari and use Protect, and the Poison KOs the combo. Alolan Raichu comes out, and I let Hikari get taken out. I send in Manny. Keep in mind that Manny is poisoned now from the Toxic Spikes. I Dynamax and use Max Quake as he sends in Toxapex, but I get the KO. Alolan Ninetales is out next, and I use Max Quake, but Mandingi Dynamaxes and uses Max Starfall. The Life Orb plus the Poison damage paired, it's just, it's doing way too much damage to Manny. After my Dynamax ends, I send in Scar, who eats the Max Starfall. And this is where I realize I've lost. Scar gets taken out by the Blizzard, and I send in Manny. If I had just a bit more HP, I could have won, or maybe had a moment to defog again. Mandingi simply played his resources far better than mine. He had played his endgame insanely well, and was simply the better player in Game 3. Manny falls after landing an Ice Shard, and I have lost the set 2-1. to one. I am eliminated from our Season 4 tournament, and I have secured myself now at 3rd place. Chapter 9, Reflection So the next day, we watch the finals between Mendingi and Balak, where Balak ends up winning. Our top 3 result is Balak at 1st place, Mendingi in 2nd place, and me in 3rd place. Overall, I'm happy with this tournament. I brought a goofy team full of low-rated Pokemon with the exception of Moody Octillery, and I was still able to get top three. This is the lowest I have ever placed so far, but I can't complain because I'm still in the top three. And I've actually been in the top three now for four seasons in a row, winning two of them. I want to say a big GG's to Mandingi for being such an amazing final opponent. I truly believe I could have won, but the second game I was just unlucky, and Mandingi knew that he couldn't waste that, and he played that third game far better than I ever could have. 
He used his resources and did management of that so well. So a masterclass win against me that third battle. And I'm looking forward to a rematch in a future season. I know many of you might be curious as to what the message here is to conclude our story. And the truth is, and the conclusion is, you can't always win. More opponents will always rise, old and new. And you are destined to lose at some points, but that simply keeps you wanting to become better. That simply sets you up for making your own comeback in this endless journey of improving. I'm happy with the results, and even though I would have loved to win again, I will simply just have to work even harder. And that makes me happy. I'm very fortunate that I get to battle and play alongside extremely powerful players. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and comment, and let me know in the comments your favorite part of the video. I'm looking forward to Season 5, which will be later this summer, and I will be streaming that live on my Twitch channel, link in the description. And I've actually been streaming a lot on there on Pixelmon on the HexMC server. Make sure you check them out, Discord link in the description, as we have awesome future stuff planned, and I am entering tournaments that they are hosting. And if you see me in the server, make sure you say hi. Hopefully I'll get to battle a lot of you guys um, in those tournaments, and if you are a little disappointed in this video because I didn't get the win, fear not, because in a couple days I will be hosting how I won the first ever HexMC tournament. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Now while you're here and before the video ends, make sure you click one of these videos here on screen. I got a awesome video right here as well as a playlist on the other side of all the tournament videos. If, you, if this is the first one you're watching, I highly recommend you watch the previous ones. And uh, that does it for this video. I'll see you guys next time where I am determined to come back to being a champion. Farewell.